nuclear fuel is a pretty difficult thing to come by in real life and in minecraft as well so in this video we are going to learn about methods using which you can recycle your nuclear fuel in order to get the most out of it now this includes the rbmk fuels and the normal fuels for big and small reactors though the method for the rbmk fuel is a bit different than the other reactors so i would highly recommend getting any hazmat protection suit and also upgrade it to make it fireproof as these fuels are going to be very hot when you take them out of the reactor so yeah without any further ado guys let's get straight into it let's start this video with the rbmk fuel rods now this rbmk reactor has been running for quite some time now and that means the fuel rods have now started depleting so first let's take a look at the composition of the fuel that i'm using in this reactor and then we can talk more about the stats of the fuel rod so in the middle i have medium enriched plutonium 239 which is a self igniting fuel rod and in the outermost corners i have high enriched uranium 235 which is not a self igniting fuel rod but it has built up some xenon poisoning due to the temperature of the reactor being low so now let's take a look at the stats the plutonium rod has been depleted by 4.5% and it is going up continuously as for the uranium rod they have been depleted by around 1.2% for each rod so here's a thumb rule for recycling rbmk fuel the depletion level must be higher than 1% If the rod is not depleted by 1%, you won't be able to recycle it. But once it's higher than 1%, then yes, you will be able to recycle the RBMK fuel. Now there are five levels to this depletion as listed on the screen. So first let's talk about taking this fuel rod out of the reactor. There are two ways you can do that. The first method being by using the storage column and connecting that storage column to a hopper and crate system, which is what I'm going to do here. and the other method is basically by removing the rod by your own hand which is a dangerous method so i would suggest using the crane if you have access to it so connect the storage column with the crate like this connected by a hopper and then by using the crane you can pull out the fuel rod that has been depleted by over 1% so first let's pull out the medium and rich plutonium rod which is driving the reaction in the first place Now by pulling out this fuel rod I have essentially halted the entire reaction. So let's first place the rod inside here. There we go. And now let's take a look at the reactor. So the fuel rod is out and the temperature in every other column is going going down slowly as the reaction has now stopped. Now if you take a closer look at this fuel rod its temperature is well above 4800 degrees celsius the core temperature i mean and the skin temperature is about 1200 degrees celsius now in order to recycle this fuel rod you will need to cool down the rod to 50 degrees celsius both the skin temperature and the core temperature and in order to do that place the fuel rod in a spent fuel pool drum and as soon as you do that you will see that the temperature will start coming down now make sure that this spent fuel pool drum is surrounded on all the sides by water that way it can work with the maximum effectiveness now as for the uranium rods you can already see that they have cooled down to 20 degrees celsius so this is the benefit of using a rod which is not self igniting they will cool down by being inside the rbmk but the self igniting fuel rods they won't cool down so easily that is why you need to place them in a spent fuel pool drum now i am i am going to let this fuel rod cool down and let's take a look at silex Silex is the machine that we are going to use in order to recycle these fuel rods. Now in order to craft the silex, this is the crafting recipe using an assembly machine. 12 glass blocks, 2 motors, 4 high speed steel ingots, 8 steel plates, 2 dashing ingots, 1 steel barrel, diamond crystals and steel pipes and that will give you a silex. Now for using the silex you will also need hydrogen peroxide. So first things first In order to get the pellets out of the fuel rods you need to switch or yeah as i am in creative i am going to switch my game mode to survival but yeah if you are playing in survival this is how you do it and this can't be done in creative by the way so take this fuel rod and place it in your 2x2 crafting space here and that will give you 8 fuel pellets exactly the same amount of pellets that you used in order to make this fuel rod and let's take out the fuel pellets for the second one as well So just place it down in here and yeah take the pellets out so now we have a total of 16 high enriched uranium fuel pellets which are nearly brand new as the depletion level was only around 1% place them down like this 
and the silex will start doing its work. So once the silex is running, it will start basically breaking down these pellets into their core, co core components. So we have a tiny pile of short-lived nuclear waste and I'm gonna, just going to speed this process up so that you can see all the things that this silex is going to give up. Now the main thing to use here is the tiny pile of sh nuclear waste. So let's wait for it and there we go. So this tiny pile of short-lived nuclear waste can be placed or basically can be processed in two ways. Once you have nine of them, take them in a crafting table and place them around like this and that will give you a short-lived nuclear waste and it is for uranium-235 so take them out now there are two ways in which you can recycle this nuclear waste the first way is again by using a silo which is the method that I am gonna recommend you and the other way is by placing them in nuclear fuel drum nuclear waste drum that is so let's place down our short-lived nuclear waste here and the silex will start processing it and it will give us materials like cesium and yeah you can use any in order to see everything that this is gonna give you so we got a cesium nugget a tectinium nugget and we are also gonna get a nuclear waste so remember how when we were recycling the pellets that the fuel rod gave us it used to give us short-lived nuclear waste and when we recycle that nuclear waste it is gonna give us like yes this nuclear waste cannot be processed further so that's that now let's take a look at the other method which is by placing nuclear waste disposal drums by placing these drums and placing these short-lived fuels inside it it will convert it into liquid and gaseous nuclear waste which can then be processed in a chemical plant in order to produce vitrified nuclear waste so yeah now the processing time for the short-lived nuclear waste is 15 minutes and the long-lived nuclear waste is 3 hours if you place down tiny pile of short-lived nuclear waste by the way it is gonna be completed in a really small amount of time so let's take a look here as you can see some of our tiny waste or the tiny pile of nuclear waste has been decayed and this decayed waste has been converted into liquid and gaseous nuclear waste so we have 20 milli buckets of gaseous nuclear waste now this as i told you can be processed in a chemical plant and for that you are gonna need the liquid and gaseous fluid ducts for the waste disposal and yeah liquid waste vitrification and gaseous waste vitrification place them in the chemical plant get some power in there and connect your liquid and gaseous nuclear waste fuel fluid ducts like this there and they will automatically start pumping them inside there you will also need lead sand and once you place the lead sand inside there, it will start producing vitrified nuclear waste like this. So that is how you can actually recycle nuclear waste for the RBMK fuel drum. Now as the core temperature is not still 50 degrees, I cannot recycle this fuel rod yet, but the process is going to be the same. Use NEI in order to look for different recipes. Yeah. Now let's talk about the conventional nuclear reactors, which is the big reactor and the small reactor. So these reactors when operated will directly give you depleted nuclear waste. Now you can take it out in the form of rod. As you can see, I have these depleted plutonium rods here. Some have been completely depleted, some have been partially depleted. So you can directly take out these fuel rods. Let me do that. And as for the big reactor, this fuel rod or this fuel, basically this doesn't work on fuel rods, this works on fuel, will directly produce depleted uranium fuel. Now this fuel is really hot and it will burn you when it is in your inventory. So be careful about that. As I told you, your hazmat should, should have any sort of fire protection. And if you don't have that, then you can use fire resistance potion or even a tungsten reacher. So once you have your depleted fuel, Place it in a crafting table and that will give you depleted uranium fuel which is hot as you can see written beside it. And now that I have taken out the depleted fuel rod, I have three empty fuel rods. You can place this hot fuel inside the spent fuel pool drum and the pool will start cooling it down. Now as for the empty fuel rods that we have in our inventory, 
let's use that to take out the fuel from the big reactor as well and as you can see the the spent fuel pool drum has already cooled down one of the depleted plutonium fuels that we put inside so that's pretty good so take this fuel out the depleted fuel and then we can process it inside a centrifuge but first let's take out this uranium fuel that we have in here one two and three so we have depleted uranium fuel and the process is still the same place it inside a crafting table and take the depleted fuel out of it. and place this fuel rod inside sorry place this fuel inside there we go now you can take out this cool down depleted fuel whether it is uranium plutonium whatever and then you can place this fuel inside a centrifuge in order to recycle so each pile of this fuel the depleted plutonium fuel is gonna give us two reactor grade plutonium nuggets like this so we got two reactor grade plutonium nuggets which can again be used as a fuel and we also got polonium 210 nuggets and finally three pieces of tiny pile of nuclear waste so yeah this is what the plutonium fuel the depleted plutonium fuel is gonna give us now the things that the uranium fuel will give us will be a bit different than that it's gonna give us uranium 238 plutonium reactor grade plutonium and yeah tiny pile of nuclear waste you can use these nuggets in order to form bilex and once again form plutonium fuel from them now different things are gonna give you different outputs right different fuels are gonna give you different outputs so here's the output for the uranium uranium 238 reactor grade plutonium tectanium and tiny pile of nuclear waste so for thorium we have uranium 238 thorium 232 uranium 233 and tiny pile of nuclear waste uranium 233 by the way will be pretty important in this picture as for the depleted plutonium fuel we get two reactor grade plutonium nuggets one polonium nugget and three pile of nuclear waste now the depleted mox fuel will give you reactor grade plutonium uranium 238 polonium 210 and tiny pile of nuclear waste and finally we have the cerbidium fuel which will give you beryllium lead solonium and nuclear waste so that was all i had for this video guys i hope you guys liked it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this Peace out my guys, stay safe.